Hello, Super Scholars. Welcome to our third lesson of the Virtual Vacation Bible School Elementary class at Christ Tabernacle Apostolic Church. I have an exciting lesson in store for you today, and I'm happy to have the opportunity to learn more with you. How about you? Are you ready to get started? Our Vacation Bible School lesson is titled The Names of God. I'm certainly certain that you have the following items handy. That you have your Bible, something to write on, a notebook or a notepad, and a writing utensil. Yesterday, we were introduced to several Hebrew names of God. We learned that God has a lot of different names and titles he goes by in the Bible and that these names and titles help us to better understand who he is. In today's lesson, we are going to start with the very first name of God that we find in the Bible. Where do you think that we see God's name in the Bible? We meet God in the very first sentence of the very first chapter in the very first book of the Bible, which is the book of Genesis. Genesis 1 and 1 says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, you know that the Bible wasn't originally written in English, right? The Old Testament of the Bible was written mostly in Hebrew, and the New Testament was written in Greek. This is important to know for this particular study, because a lot of the time in English, we just see the word God. But in Hebrew, the name of God was more complicated and not something that we could just say with one word in English. You're going to be learning words from Hebrew today. You don't have to remember all these words as I will not be giving you a quiz. But these words are cool to hear and they help us to understand God better. So turn with me in your Bibles, I will be reading from the New Living Translation, and we're going to go over three scriptures that are related to our lesson. Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 2 and 7. And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground. He breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. In Psalm 139, 14th verse and 16th verse. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous, how well I know it. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. So next up, we will have a video that I would like you to watch. In this video by GodQuestions.org, the orator outlines the different names of God in Hebrew along with their meanings in English. Take a listen. What are the different names of God and what do they mean? Each of the many names of God describes a different aspect of his many faceted character. Here are some better known names of God in the Bible. El Eloha, God, mighty, strong, prominent. Etymologically, El appears to mean power and might. El is associated with other qualities such as integrity, jealousy, and compassion, but the root idea of might remains. Elohim, God, creator, mighty, and strong. The plural form of Eloah, which accommodates the doctrine of the Trinity. From the Bible's first sentence, the superlative nature of God's power is evident as God, Elohim, speaks the world into existence. El Shaddai, God Almighty, the Mighty One of Jacob, speaks to God's ultimate power over all. Adonai, Lord, used in place of Yahweh, which was thought by the Jews to be too sacred to be uttered by sinful men. In the Old Testament, Yahweh is more often used in God's dealings with his people, while Adonai is used more when he deals with the Gentiles. Yahweh, Jehovah, Lord, strictly speaking, the only proper name for God. Translated in English Bibles as LORD, all capitals, to distinguish it from Adonai. The revelation of the name is first given to Moses in Exodus chapter 3. I am who I am. 
This name specifies an immediacy, a presence. Yahweh is present, accessible, near to those who call on him for deliverance, forgiveness, and guidance. Yahweh Jireh, the Lord will provide. The name memorialized by Abraham when God provided the ram to be sacrificed in place of Isaac. Yahweh Rapha, the Lord who heals. I am Jehovah who heals you, both in body and soul. In body, by preserving from and curing diseases, and in soul, by pardoning iniquities. Yahweh Nisi, the Lord our banner. Where banner is understood to be a rallying place. This name commemorates the desert victory over the Amalekites in Exodus 17. Yahweh Mekedesh, the Lord who sanctifies, makes holy. God makes it clear that he alone, not the law, can cleanse his people and make them holy. Yahweh Shalom, the Lord our peace. The name given by Gideon to the altar he built after the angel of the Lord assured him he would not die as he thought he would after seeing him. Yahweh Elohim, Lord God, a combination of God's unique name, Yahweh, and the generic Lord, signifying that he is the Lord of Lords. Yahweh Tzidkenu, the Lord our righteousness. As with Yahweh Mekadesh, it is God alone who provides righteousness to man, ultimately in the person of his Son, Jesus Christ, who became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Yahweh Rohi, the Lord our shepherd. After David pondered his relationship as a shepherd to his sheep, he realized that was exactly the relationship God had with him. And so he declares, Yahweh Rohi is my shepherd, I shall not want. Yahweh Shema, the Lord is there. The name ascribed to Jerusalem and the temple there, indicating that the once departed glory of the Lord had returned. Yahweh Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts. Hosts meaning hordes, both of angels and of men. He is the Lord of the host of heaven and of the inhabitants of the earth, of Jews and Gentiles, of rich and poor, master and slave. The name is expressive of the majesty, power, and authority of God and shows that he is able to accomplish what he determines to do. El Elyon, Most High, derived from the Hebrew root for go up or ascend, so the implication is of that which is the very highest. El Elyon denotes exaltation and speaks of absolute right to lordship. El Roy, God of Seeing, the name ascribed to God by Hagar, alone and desperate in the wilderness after being driven out by Sarah. When Hagar met the angel of the Lord, she realized she had seen God himself in a theophany. She also realized that El Roy saw her in her distress and testified that he is a God who lives and sees all. El Olam, Everlasting God, God's nature is without beginning or end, free from all constraints of time and he contains within himself the very cause of time itself. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. El Gibor, Mighty God, the name describing the Messiah, Christ Jesus, in this prophetic portion of Isaiah. As a powerful and mighty warrior, the Messiah, the Mighty God, will accomplish the destruction of God's enemies and rule with a rod of iron. Got questions? The Bible has answers, and we'll help you find them. Welcome back, Super Scholars. How did you like the video? Have you ever heard of any of the Hebrew names for God before? My friend Shiloh was gracious to join us for another virtual Bible school lesson. Welcome to the table, Shiloh. It's awesome that you're assisting me again today, Shiloh. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure to be with you here, Sister Val. I have enjoyed the lesson so far. So Shiloh, you watched the video. Can you share with our viewers any familiar names of God along with the meanings that you can possibly remember? Adonai, which means Lord. The video said it was once thought by the Jews to be too sa sacred to be uttered by sinful men. Awesome. Wow. So that's something to really, really let sink in. Anything else? Yahweh Rapha, which means the Lord who heals. I believe God can heal all sicknesses. 
but you are absolutely a super great listener, Shiloh, to be able to capture such in detail. Today, we are continuing our lesson about the names and titles of God. God goes by a lot of different names and titles in the Bible. We will talk about the importance of the names in the Bible, and we'll look at some of the more well-known names and titles of God. God has a lot of names and titles in the Bible. We're only going to study just a few of them. So let's go back to the first verse in the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. When we see God in this verse, the word Hebrew, the word in Hebrew is Elohim. The first part of Elohim is El, which means strong or power. Say it with me. Elohim. When we see this name, we are reminded that God is our strong creator. We see the name Elohim in the Bible appear over 2,000 times. It's the second most used name of God in the Bible. And many times it's used when the Bible is talking about how God is powerful and how he created everything. Can you name a few things that God created? Think for a minute. We'll have Shiloh help you out. There are trees, grass, animals, humans, rocks, mountains, stars, water, and sand. Nice work, Shiloh. And to you too, Super Skyler. Scholars. There are two Hebrew words that I find to be super cool that have to do with the strong creator Elohim. The first word is Yatsar. Shadow is going to spell that for you. Y A T S A R. Yatsar. Excellent. And the second word is bara. Bara. B A R A. Both words essentially mean to make. Let's take a look at the Hebrew meanings. Yatsar means to make something according to a plan. Like when you bake a cake, you plan to have eggs, oil, bowl for mixing, cake pan, frosting, and so on. Or you plan to have a backyard campfire. Bara means to create something out of nothing. Any person can yatsar, but only God can bara. He just spoke this whole list that Shiloh gave you and everything else ever made or that will ever exist. It's because God made the whole universe just by saying the words. Genesis 2 and 7 uses Yatsar, and it says, Then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into the man's nostrils, and the man became a living person. God created mankind with a plan. God created you with a plan for you. He took the dust and made living, breathing people. That is the strong creator God. Let that sink in just for a few moments. God said a few words and created everything from nothing. Psalm 139 in the 14th verse says, Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. Psalm 139.16 reads, You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. Elohim, the strong creator who created the sun and the stars and the sea and the sand, created you. And the strong creator wrote out a plan for your life. Are you ready to begin our craft activity? If you're able to pick up your craft activity kit from the church, you want to get packet label number three. If you are unable to pick up the packet, a list of supplies that you need will be shown on the screen. 
and I'll go over the list of supplies as well. Step-by-step -step directions will also be available on the church website. So our craft for this lesson is going to be titled, God is Mobile. So not God is mobile, but God is, and the word mobile. So what you need is you will need a piece of poster board, white poster board, if you will. If you don't have white poster board, you can also use a piece of white paper. And then you want to cut out a shape of a cloud in that piece of paper. It's a good idea that uh, since we're making a mobile, to put some tape on the back of it and then poke a hole through. The tape is going to help you to secure your string when we put it through to hang it up. Shiloh's gonna help us go through the whole list of everything that we need. So Shiloh, why don't you tell them what's in the bag? We have at least 10 cotton balls mm -hmm. and some string. So when she mentioned string, it can be yarn, it can be um, a shoelace, if that's what you have. It can be wire. It can also be, possibly, if you have juke cord. So the idea is, like I said, to make a mobile. And Shiloh's going to start making this mobile as I talk you through it. Okay? So what's the first thing you're going to do? Well, you will... First thing she's going to do is to add some of the cotton balls, okay? So we're just going to put the, the glue all over the mobile. We're going to spread out the cotton ball a little bit because we want to cover as much surface as we can. And then you're just going to tack it down in the glue. And you're going to do that and repeat that for all 10 cotton balls just to cover as much of the surface of the the poster board as you can. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to attach the two longest strings of our cord, rope, in this case we have yarn. Um, so whatever type of string that you have, that's what you're going to attach next. And we're going to do that on the very back of our cloud okay so we turn the cloud over like so and with our tape that's how we're going to attach our string so Shiloh you want to lay your string on make sure that you keep two ends hanging down so you just want to put your tape on the string or yarn, or whichever type of hanging material you are going to be using. And then we're going to do the same thing with the other piece, the other long piece. Now we have a short piece of yarn left over. And that short piece of yarn represents our hanging device. So I put some tape on the edge just to help thread it through. So I'm gonna thread it through one side and then I'm going to go right back into that same hole to bring it back to the other side, creating a loop on the end with the cotton balls. I'm going to tie that off into a knot on the back and then we will secure that with a piece of tape. So you get the idea, correct? One of the other things that you'll need in making this project are shapes of the words of God. So in the video, it went over a whole bunch of different Hebrew words meaning that mean God, as well as their English words. We are going to add the scripture to the cloud, and it will end up looking like this. You want to hold it up? Hold it up. I don't know. 
So Shiloh did this one earlier and on one side of the paper it says Jehovah Shalom and on the other side it reads the Lord is my peace. So this is our mobile that we created that will help us to remember the names of our Lord Jesus. Well friends, I want to thank you so much for joining in today. You know, the Bible is an amazing book. It tells us all about how God loves us and how he wants us to live and about Jesus and the sacrifices that he made so we can live with him forever in heaven. We hope you enjoyed today's lesson. I certainly enjoyed you tuning in with us. Come again and visit us for our next lesson. And as always, we close with a prayer. Bow your hands. Fold your head. Our Father, who are in heaven, thank you for the families, children, their parents, and caregivers who love you. Lord, please open our hearts to receive you, ears to hear you, and minds to concentrate on you. In Jesus' name, amen. So until the next time, bye! bye.